Hey guys, Eric here. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Before we tune in to the details today, I have one little favor I'd like to ask you. Are you listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify? If you are, and if you haven't done it already, it would be so helpful to Anita and I if you could leave a five-star review. It could just be putting five stars or even writing down something that you really enjoyed and learned from the episodes that you've heard so far. This kind of help would really improve our ability to give you better content and also to help other people find out about Taiwanica. So if you wouldn't mind taking just a few moments to do that, if you haven't already, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we really hope you enjoy today's episode. This is episode 76, talking about three easy ways to make decisions. What's up, everybody? This is Eric, one of the hosts here on Taiwanica Podcast, here to bring you one of the Friday specials. And it will just be me today giving you this special. I'm very excited about this information because it has been life-changing for me and I have heard lots of people out there telling me how it's been difficult for them to make decisions. So here are going to be some of the easiest things that you can do immediately right after hearing them to help you make decisions in a variety of ways. Some of them are more thinking process, some of them are more feeling process, and I'll explain the difference between the two as we go through them. So I only have three today, but there are definitely lots of different decision making. If you have a decision making process that you find very valuable, please share in Taiwanica podcast on Instagram. We'll be happy to know what you do to be able to improve yourself. But for everybody else listening who don't have any decision making styles and they're still wanting to learn how to change that in their life, definitely tune in all the way till the end because all three of these are pretty powerful. All right, so just to dive on in, I'm going to start with number one. Number one is one new one that I recently discovered, but I found it to be very powerful and impacting in my life immediately as soon as I started using it. And that is called the 10-10-10 method. That's right, you heard three tens there. Each of them represent a different time. One of them is 10 minutes. The second one is 10 months. And the third one is 10 years. Now, what's going on is what we're trying to create a clear idea of when I make a choice, will I be happy about the choice I make within 10 minutes, within 10 months, and within 10 years? So let me give you a clear example of what that might look like. Let's say, for example, you have a habit. I have a habit, and that is to eat chocolate. For all you who know me, I love dark chocolate. It's one of my favorite foods out there. And sometimes I will get into the habit, some people might call it a bad habit, (laughs) of eating chocolate too much and too often. So one example of that might be I eat it once a week or maybe even more, maybe every day. And so sometimes, especially recently, because I have been eating it quite often, uh, I will ask myself, is this a good idea? So when I started using the 10-10-10 method, I would first say, okay, when I'm about to eat the chocolate, I would ask myself, is this something that I would want to be happy with eating 10 minutes from now? Would I be okay that I ate this chocolate today? And if the answer is yes, okay, well, then I can continue on. Well, will this be a habit that I would like to continue to grow in the next 10 months from now? So I keep eating chocolate like this every day for the next 10 months? Oh, okay, maybe not, because what's going to happen? Well, I might feel a little bit unhealthy, or I might feel a little bit like I've gained a lot of weight, something along these lines. Okay, and then if I think about it even further, well, 10 years, if I keep doing this for 10 straight years, wow, well, I might just well be a chocolate bar because I'm eating chocolate all the dang time for 10 straight years. Good goodness, I don't think that's a good idea. So when I approached it this way and thinking about it, not only about the current Eric, But I'm also thinking 10 months from now, Eric, and 10 years from now, Eric, two out of three Eric's are not satisfied with this habit, not with this choice. So in the end, I decided 
that I'm not going to continue eating chocolate every day. Even though the 10 minute Eric and the current Eric feel a little sad saying that, and the 10 month version and the 10 year version of Eric is actually very happy about this choice. Why? Because I'm making a healthy choice that is holistically connected to who I am. So that's why I think this method is very powerful and you can use it immediately with lots of things. There are some other examples that I'd like to share, but I'm only gonna share one more. It's about work. So another example that I know of is a, a woman who is really passionate about her job, but and we'll just call her Mary as an example here. Mary really wants to improve herself in her work career, but in the end, she also has kids and she's a single mom. And so sometimes she needs to make choices that are going to be connected to her family. And sometimes she needs to make choices that are connected to her job. And one time Mary was given an option of going out and spending time with her kids right after her work. But all of a sudden her work is actually asking her to stay overtime because there's this really important project that needs to be completed by the end of the night. So Mary did the 10, 10, 10 option here. Uh, she said to herself, okay, 10 minutes from now, would I be happy to stay at the job or would I be happy about leaving the job and spending time with my kids? Well, 10 minutes from now, Mary thought, okay, well, I'd probably be happy spending time with my kids, but let's look 10 months in the future. So she looked 10 months in the future, what happened? Well, she said, if I do this option of not staying for the project and in the business world as a single mother, there's a lot of hypocrisy of, uh, oh, if a single mother says no one time, she's going to probably say no many times. And this assumption is made about single mothers not being able to stay committed to the work. And she knew this. And so she decided at that moment, maybe it's not a good idea. And then she looked 10 years in the future. And what did she see? She said, well, if I make the choice of staying at the job, then may, there's a really good chance that I can get a promotion. Sure, my kids might be unhappy at this one moment, but there are going to be plenty of times where I could make up for this one time of not spending time with the kids. And I can definitely, you know, work with communicating with them why this was so important. So in the end, she decided to stay. And 10 years later, she has been using this method for quite a while. She got the promotion that she really wanted, and she works at a really big organization. So by doing these steps, she was able to gain the result that she really wanted rather than focusing on the impulse of what she desired in the moment. So hopefully that shows you the power behind 10-10-10 method. Okay, we're going to go on to method number two. Method number two is going to be a feeling decision maker. Okay, it's not a thinking cognitive method. It's about following your gut, okay? Maybe and perhaps a lot of you have heard this phrase, following your gut, but a lot of people say, well, I know where my gut is in my body, but I don't know how necessarily to follow it. <laughs> or some people say, oh, I know how to follow my heart sometimes, but sometimes I don't. And keep in mind, this is all connected to intuition, knowing what your inner self really wants and this is really powerful stuff. It can help you through a lot of things in life if you know how to tune into it. So today, we're going to just use a very simple technique for you to make this decision when it's a, bit, a little bit difficult. It's going to be for smaller decisions rather than larger ones because larger decisions usually need a little bit more of a cognitive process like the 10-10-10 method or the next method I'll be introducing but for you know smaller things when or when you're in a moment where you're not really sure what to do at all this method that I'm about to introduce will be very helpful okay this is a method that I actually invented and that is to follow your inner voice but when you're doing this usually you're going to have two options in front of you so let's make an example to make it really clear okay so you have a, a vacation that you want to go on with your family. But your family really has two desires. They want to go either to, for example, Japan, or they want to go to Thailand. Okay, both of them are equally possible. Both of them have great choices and great opportunities for you to experience. All of your family members want to go to both of these places. There's not really 
a greater level of Japan or a greater level of Thailand. They're both great equally. And so you're stuck. And so you're thinking, well, which one to pick? Because logically speaking, they all look, they both look perfect. So in that kind of situation, this is where this kind of decision making can be very beneficial. So this is what you do. Simply in your head, when you're thinking about the choice, think about the two places back and forth. Just go back and forth. Japan, Thailand, Japan, Thailand, Japan, Thailand. Sooner or later, one of these words is going to get louder in your head. Japan, Thailand, Japan, Thailand, Japan, Thailand. Okay, so we're, <laughs> you're getting the idea, right? So Thailand is starting to sound louder in your head. And if you're not really sure if that's true or not, you can go the opposite way, like Thailand, Japan, Thailand, Japan, Thailand, Japan, you know, so it, it, you know, you can confirm if you want to do both ways. Sometimes I do that just in case, but it's very effective. And the, the reason why I love this method is because I'm tuning in to both mind and body at the same time. And at the end of the day, I don't regret my decision because I feel like I made a conscious choice between the two. I made a very clear and awareness choice of which one I wanted. And that was Thailand in this situation. So that's a very easy technique that you can use for really small things that you, you want to try. Okay, so we're going to dive into our third and final technique today. And that is called the Eisenhower technique. Eisenhower is a man who invented this technique. It's a more cognitive, analytical technique that you can use for making decisions that are more important. And they can usually be used for things like business or for like big decisions with your family or, you know, things that you're usually doing on a regular basis. But you know, they need to have a schedule or an importance level. Okay, so that's actually part of it, importance. So here we go. The Eisenhower technique is actually two keywords, and we're going to analyze both of them uh, in a specific way. So the first word is levels of importance. So something important. And the second one is level of urgency or urgent. Okay, so we're going to put these in a square. And the inside of the square, there are going to be four small squares. And so on the left side of this, this square, the two squares on the left side, one of them is going to be important and the other one's going to be not important. On the right hand of the square side, it's going to be urgent on the top and on the bottom, not urgent. Okay. So what we're going to do here is look at the first one, which has both important and urgent. So Important, let's talk about it really quick. If we talk about something that's important, important means that you need to get it done, right? It needs to be done. Urgent, on the other hand, is talking about it's quickly needing to be done, right? It's the speed is here. And so if something has both the tops, both urgent and important together, then that decision that you're trying to think of right now, so an example of that might be Oh, I'm going to make an example with my son because he's easiest to think of. My son, if he has no diapers left in the house, that is going to be an important and urgent decision that I need to go buy some more diapers. If not, there's going to be poop and pee all over the house, right? <laughs> so that right there is an important and urgent situation that needs to get done now. Okay, no waiting. Because if not, if you wait, then there's going to be some urgent or dire consequences. Okay. Now, let's say it only has important, but it doesn't have urgent. Okay. So it is something that you need to do, but it doesn't have that time connected to it. Okay. In that kind of situation, you can schedule it. Okay. So let's say, for example, I want to make another episode of Taiwanica. Okay. Or maybe you want to go and meet a friend. Okay. It's important for you and it's important for me, but maybe it's not something that needs to be done today, right? But it wants to be done soon. So you can easily just put this in your calendar, whatever kind of calendar you like to use, and then just make sure that it gets done. 
And by scheduling it, simply by putting it in your schedule, you're telling yourself, okay, this is important to me, so I'm going to do my best to complete it in time. Now, let's say something is urgent, but not important, okay? If it's only urgent and it's not important to you, let's say something is happening in your life, like, oh my gosh, this letter, I have a letter that I need to mail, okay, for the company, or I need to send this letter for a friend. It's urgent, but it's not important to me, right? So in this kind of situation, you can delegate. This word means just to give the task or the work to somebody else if possible. So I know that's not possible for everybody, but if possible, if you have a friend or a family member or a colleague who can help you with the task that is only urgent, then you can decide instead of you taking the time to do it, you can go and ask somebody else to do it for you. And in that kind of situation, you're saving yourself time for doing the more important things instead of having to take the time to do something that's only urgent but not necessarily for you personally important, right? So, yes. Now, the last one is something that's not important and not urgent, okay? A lot of people get stuck in these tasks. They think, oh, wow, this I have these things I need to do, but neither is it important to me and it's neither urgent, but somehow I do these things first. And a lot of people do this because of, you know, confusion or just uh, having difficulty of being dedicated to the work that needs to get done or, you know, just pure laziness can also be an issue. And these kind of situations are the reason why these kind of tasks, if you know that they are neither important nor urgent, then you just toss them, you know, you get rid of them. Or if at the very least, you put them into a schedule that maybe you can do later or even create, this is what I do is, well, I, I plan on creating this is a reconsidering list. And having a reconsidering list will help you just look at it again later when you're not really focused on it so much. And think again, is this important to me? Is this urgent? And when you have that on that list and not in your head all the time, you're able to think clearly about the choices that you do want to make at this specific moment. So that is the Eisenhower technique. All three techniques that I introduced today are powerful and helpful in their own ways. You can try them all out in all different kinds of situations. Personally, I think the 10-10-10 technique is really great when you're making life choices, okay? So when you're trying to think of something that you want to do for yourself for now and in the future, it's great. When you're in a state of urgency or you have a situation where you just really don't know which way to go, you're kind of just stuck. The second one, following your gut or following your heart technique is very helpful. Thinking about it, going back and forth until you make a decision that's loud in your head. And then finally, Eisenhower technique is really great, especially in business or work scenarios, because you're thinking clearly about what are all the tasks that are available to me right now, and what do I need to do quickly, and it's important to me, and anything else can be delegated, organized to somebody else, or it can just wait. So yeah, these are the techniques that I wanted to share with you today. There it is. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please definitely give it a thumbs up wherever you're watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be great. And also spread the word about Taiwanica Podcast. Uh, we are here to help you every single week. And if you are interested in learning more, we'll be spending more time on our new website that is called ericananita.com. And you can find out even more information like our blog and our new content and events that we're going to be hosting there. So definitely check it out when you have the time. That's ericananita.com. And also, finally, if you are interested, you can check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash Taiwanica for some funny things that Anita and I like to make and support us through there. Thank you very much for listening. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to Taiwanica. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in the next episode.